A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. We are going to take a look at a very short but uh, nice <laughs> little mathematics um, question. Namely, we want to find out what the value of this weird finite summation is. The 1 of 1 over square root of 1 plus square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 3 plus, I think you can see the pattern, up until 1 over square root of 99 plus square root of 100. And, well, this expression looks really ugly at first, but it's going to collapse into something that looks pretty good. Not as good looking as you, though you're absolutely magnificent um, individual, but um, still something pretty good. And now we are going to dive right in. It's not going to be a very long video. At first, I would like to rewrite this in summation notation because um, I don't want to write all this shit out all the time. So this right here is actually equal to a finite summation where our running index is going to be bounded between. Okay, um, what is the lowest running index that we have? I mean one. Okay, we're going to start at one up until and now we just need to take a look at a smaller number down here in the denominator, namely up until 99. Okay, um, it's going to collapse nicely overall into a very nice summand in here. I mean, we're going to have one over, okay, we're going to have square roots added together in some way. But what is inside of the square roots? I mean, we're going to start off with one, okay, meaning we are just going to have an n here in our first square root. And then we are always going to add the square root of the successor of the number. Uh, to it. So meaning we're going to have n plus 1 overall. Now it makes sense why we let the running index go up to 99 because um, n plus 1 is going to be 100 overall at this point. Now what you would like to do is um, if you see a fraction, you don't want to have square roots in the denominator. You would always like to rationalize the denominator because um, yes, Okay, be, be, because reasons. <laughs> and for reasons that will become uh, apparent in a minute, namely for the sake of solving this problem nicely, um, rationalizing the denominator is actually the, the way to go here. And how would you approach something like this? I mean, to get rid of the square roots in the summation here, you would like to expand this fraction by the conjugate of this expression in the denominator because then we are going to get the difference of two squares which is going to get rid of the square roots overall. This is the thing you would always like to do when dealing with something like this. You find this technique always when doing limits with square roots or when doing infinite summations. A lot of times with um, integrals too actually. So we are going to just expand this fraction with its conjugate. So this is the square root of n minus the square root of n plus 1 divided by the square root of n minus the square root of n plus 1. And well, like mentioned before, it's going to collapse nicely because what we have down here is the difference of two squares, meaning it's of the form a plus b times a minus b. And this is going to turn into a squared minus b squared. And the good thing is the square of a square root is just going to get rid of the square root in the process. Meaning this right here is going to turn into a finite summation where n is bounded between 1 and 99 of, okay, our numerator isn't going to change overall, so square root of n minus the square root of n plus 1 divided by and just taking the square roots away. It's going to give us n and then we're going to have minus the other part squared meaning minus n minus 1 and this is where everything collapses really nicely because n and negative n are going to cancel out since they are additive inverses to each other. Then we can distribute the negative sign into the numerator because why the hell would we have a separate negative sign here? Turning this into a finite summation where our n is bounded between 1 and 99 yet again of, and now we are going to get the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n. And this collapses really nicely and this is going to give you a nice generalized formula if you let this summation up here not go up until 99 for example, but rather up until some capital N or K. Okay, then you're going to get a nice generalized formula, but we are going to go with this um, original question that we have up here. And with this formula, actually, you can see that the limit is going to diverge. Okay, we are going to talk about this in a minute. So at first, let us write a few terms out. I mean, um, if we plug one into here, we are going to get the square root of two minus the square root of one, which is going to evaluate to one. Now, next term plugging two into here is going to give us plus the square root of three minus the square root of two. And now here you can already see where all of this is going and it's just so nice how all of this collapses in the process. And now we are going to get um, plus square root of 4 minus square root of 3 plus dot 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 
up until and the last members that we are going to have like 1990 here is going to give us the square root of 100 which is nothing but 10 minus the square root of 99. Yeah, and the cool thing is um, it's a telescoping su summation basically. So square root of 2 and this is going to cancel out, square root of 3 and this and that and this. Up until square root of 99 everything is going to cancel out leaving us with 10 minus 1. And by the piano axioms um, 10 minus 1 is the equivalent formulation of being the successor of 9 or this right here is going to turn into the predecessor of um, 10 meaning 9 overall. Um, yeah, this right here is our answer, pretty cool, right? That uh, some square root terms like this could, um, could collapse like this. Um, like mentioned before, if you let the summation go up until some k, for example, okay, our question is going to turn into rather, uh, let's, let's call it capital N because my N and K actually look alike very much. Um, this right here is not going to be 10, but rather the square root of capital N. Um, in the process capital N plus 1 actually. Meaning overall what we would get is um, square root of capital N plus 1 minus 1. And for this summation we are always going to get an irrational number out if the square root right here is not going to turn into a perfect square. So, so what we have inside the square root is, is not a perfect square overall. So the next one, the next summation that would turn out nicely would thus be for capital N being equal to 120, right? 121 giving us square root of 121 is 11 minus 1 is going to give us 10 and so on. And like mentioned before in, in the limit it, it would diverge for n to infinity obviously our square root is strictly increasing so yeah. Oh, would diverge in a limit. But yeah, this is it for now. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel, like. Don't forget to check out STEM merch. I'm going to add some new merch soon because I designed quite a bunch of new stuff and pretty excited about new releases. So yeah, um, don't forget to check it out. Other than that, Flamble Maps 2. Got some calculus content going on over there. And until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.